Well, this is all off the top of my head. I thought we were only going to do something for about 10 minutes. You guys are wasting your time! I came to New York when I was 19. Being interested in the fashion world, but this is where it all was. <laughs> My family, well, they were frightened first off, I think, because it was the fashion business. I guess they didn't think it was a profession for a man. In the mid-1950s, Bill Cunningham would move into the famed Carnegie Hall Studios. In no other single location had such an extraordinary group of artists ever been gathered. I couldn't believe it. Marlon Brando's studio was on eight till the girls broke the door down, and then he moved out. <laughs> there were no rules. I was as nuts as they were. A friend gave me a little camera. It's one of those flukes, you know. He said, here, it's an idiot box. And you almost couldn't get out of focus. And it was a revelation. You can't imagine. Bill Cunningham would become the most recognizable street and society photographer in the world. Suddenly, all the doors opened, and everything I'd known, I could record. That's how I got involved in collaborating on the clothes for Mrs. Kennedy when she was in the White House. In about the 70s, I took to the streets more and more and more. See, I was a newspaper delivery boy as a kid, so I'm used to bicycles. You see things and you can jump off the bike and photograph. This way you're up and you're free like a bird. The streets are reflecting precisely what's going on in the political world, in the social upheaval of our times. It's all right there. AIDS has been so tearing apart. I think you go out and you find something wonderful and something to inspire. And you pick up where a lot of these extraordinary talents that we've lost have left off and you try to carry on for them. Well, I never said I was a photographer. I think of myself as a fashion historian. That's what I'm interested in. And the camera is another instrument to record it. <laughs>